The origin and beginning of flamenco is a question that has intrigued researchers in the field for decades. Commonly, the period of the third quarter of the 18th century has been established as the moment in which the first flamenco musical forms are recorded in writings. Such writings cite gitanos as the people who perform that music both individually and in groups. Even though recent researches identify some of the musical and social elements that gave rise to modern flamenco, it does not correlate musically or provide answers to the questions about why those gitanos are the only and first creators of flamenco. Additionally, It does not explain the process that led to the birth of flamenco. This is due to the fact that the focus has been placed solely on finding musical precedents within Spanish music from the 17th century that do not exactly fit because there are no written testaments of Gitano music during those time periods. We know derives from great ignorance surrounding the history of the Roma people in Spain. Today, we will review the historical and social elements that Roma people dealt with in Spain, and that, in my view, conditioned their culture, and henceforth, flamenco. Flamenco Gitano is not only a music form, but a cultural expression originating in Andalusia, from Gitano people. It's not just about singing or playing, rather it includes getting together to celebrate it and experiencing certain forms of cultural behavior that are considered flamenco. The birth of this culture has been conditioned by the relationship of the Gitano people who lived within a gadje controlled society and the racism that it projected on them. Anti-Gypsism. Anti-Gypsism is a historically constructed, persistent complex of customary racism against social groups identified under the stigma gypsy or other related terms, and incorporates a homogenizing and essentializing perception and description of these groups. The attribution of specific characteristics to them. Discriminating and social structures and violent practices that emerge against that background, which have a degrading and ostracizing effect and which reproduce structural disadvantages. It is essential to understand that anti gypsyism from an ethical and political point of view, is not the problem of a social minority, but the problem of the society as a whole. The phenomenon of anti-Gypsyism and its racist nature has been shaped by the ways in which the social majority perceives, represents and treats a social minority that in the Spanish context has been stigmatized under the label Gitano. Traditional racism was firmly rooted in biological theories, both in the 1890s and in the 1930s, it was widely believed, for example, in England, Australia, and the United States, that some inherited biological trait make Africans and Chinese innately less intelligent, less enterprising, and less moral than Europeans. The problem was in his blood. Such opinions enjoyed political respectability as well as broad scientific support. Today, however, although many individuals still make these types of racist claims, they have lost all their scientific support and most of their political respectability. 
unless they are thought or proposed in cultural terms. To say that gypsies often commit crimes because they are inferior genetically is not politically correct. However, to say that they commit crimes because they come from a dysfunctional culture seems to be acceptable. From its beginnings, flamenco has provided an element of great commercial attraction for audiences of all types. Its link with Gitano people was not questioned. Gitanos were the exotic element for the trade and the, at the end of the day, its only existing creators and performers as stated by the first written text. However, the first authors who question the relationship between flamenco and gitanos come in the 20th century with the construction of the first Andalusian national identity. Some decades after the Franco dictatorship and with the emergence of the modern Andalusian and Spanish identities, a search for elements of cultural wealth was generated for the benefit of the international community. In this case, flamenco existed as the most recognizable element of the Spanish culture. This led to a process of cleaning the Gitano element within flamenco and allowing it to become a typical element of Spain or Andalusia. With this process, some official entities and organizations have institutionalized flamenco without taking into account, into account the Gitano contribution. In worst of cases, some of these organizations have even tried to hide and eliminate the contributions entirely. The popularization of flamenco music and dance as commercially viable elements on a global scale has generated a commercial struggle among the multitudes who have come to participate within the new scenario. These individuals include, but are not limited to, artists, managers, flamenco schools, merchandising companies, record companies, etc. They all want to participate in the business, and of course, leaving the Gitano element reduced to a considerable minimum. Mm. Referring to flamenco as a Gitano art form innately delegitimizes many participants with that same market, where a large amount of financial and political benefit is at stake. There are currently leadership positions within some of these institutions that represent flamenco that are occupied by politicians with zero connection to flamenco or to gitanos. The first references we have to flamenco usually come from the second half of the 18th century. However, it is impossible that an artistic expression of this magnitude and originality was created by a spontaneous generation. In other words, it has to arise to a previously existing cultural substrate and had to be for a form that stemmed from a gestation of several generations. Due to this fact, I will start with an interesting quote from the historian Mario Pena, who says, Flamenco Gitano songs were originally Spanish, but probably transformed at the very moment they were taken. Later, in that century and a half, greater isolation in which uh, Gitanos lived due to the worsening of the laws against them in the first quarter of the 17th century and the last of the 18th century, it is logical that these differences have deepened even more. When they approached the calle again, they had produced a set of melodies that we can no doubt consider Gitano and already opposed to the Andalusians. As Pena makes clear, Gitano music logically existed before the name flamenco and occurred at the same time as Gitanos began interpreting the Andalusian musical repertoire. Although the musical elements of flamenco appear later, it is fundamental to understand 
the existence of a form of Gitano musical expression that ran parallel to the Andalusian folklore. It is helpful to look back to the year 1499 when the Catholic kings promulgated the first anti-Gypsy laws. Those laws would provide the foundation for the subsequent social repression that manifested and continues to justify anti-Gypsyism in this country. It can be observed in Mr. Pena's quote that for more than a century and before the Great Roundup in 1749, the social climate was already moving towards an ethnic conflict. The pressure felt within the Gitano community would give away to more intensive marginalization and to the rise of a new form of musical and spiritual expression. This form would remain hidden within the isolated circles of the families who created Flamenco Gitano. We can begin by looking at the Spain's history in the first quarter of the 17th century. Under the reign of Felipe III, nicknamed the Pios, not the Paradox, of a number of policies were the enforced pertaining to the Gitano people. These policies or mandates are summarized in two pragmatic laws promulgated in 1611 and 1619. Felipe the Pios, the so-called Pios, sought nothing less than extinguishing the culture and the epistemology of the Spanish Roma people, who at that point uh, were uh, already been living in Spain for more than 200 years. In order to do this, he introduced prohibitions on signs of identity, name, language, costume, and traditions. The mandates against the Gitano language would unfortunately lead to the loss of Romanes in Spain. In addition to this, residences in towns of more than a thousand inhabitants was prohibited, as was the trading of livestock. Roma people were forced to dedicate themselves exclusively to farming. It was about the persecution of the Romani way of life in order to achieve their assimilation. The Pius I son, Felipe IV, also known as the Planet King, would prove no exception in this chain of events. He would also enact laws to supposedly help the Roma. In his Pragmatic of 1633, the laws continue to deny Gitano identity by prohibiting the name of Gitano and outlawing the organization of parties and celebrations, dances, community living, and the existence of the gypsy neighborhoods or called Gitanerias. The successor to Spain's throne was Carlos II, also known as the Bewitched. During his reign, the Roma social policies were continued. The previous pragmatics were reviewed as many as four times in 1692, 1693, 1695, and 1699. In addition, censuses were introduced to collect information on names, residences, marital status, number of children, trades, arms, goods, horse, and mules owned by the Roma. We are aware that this was also a practice that the Nazis incorporated and that in modern times has been proposed once again. The blacksmith, blacksmith trade was also, also prohibited and heavy penalties were introduced for cover-ups by those who would help or protect Roma people. It is hard to imagine the situation of stress, fear and isolation that many Roma people would find themselves in during that time. Perhaps it was similar to that would uh, be experienced 
in Germany during the years before the World War II. As Carlos the Bewitched has no heirs, his great-nephew Felipe V, the first king of the Bourbon dynasty, assumed the throne afterwards. This would unleash a long war of succession which did not prevent the continuance of the magnanimous policies of repression nor did it help the physical and cultural annihilation experienced by the Roma people. Because of this, new determination of cities where the Roma people were allowed to live were put into effect. Periodic censuses were established and used later to arrest people with impunity to expropriate goods and properties and the most, most important, the privation of ecclesiastic immunity, that is say, denial of the right to re of reception to sacred. If you were a Roma, you had nowhere to hide. In light of the fact that these measures were not successful in either eliminating the Roma people or forcing them to assimilate, it was decided that plans should be made for their direct expulsion from Spain. After witnessing the unsuccessful attempts made by Portugal to expel their Ciganos, the Spanish Council ruled our extirpation by expulsion and opted instead for biological extermination. The genocide was committed during the reign of Fernando VI, paradoxically known as Fernando the, the Just. He holds the dubious honor of having authorized the historic tragedy known as the as La Gran Redada or the Grain Roundup. The Great Roundup's objective was the extermination of the Gitanos and it began in 30 of July in 1749. During the period, most of the Roma people in Spain, including women, children, and the elderly, were arrested and set into forced labor. A good number of Romani people managed to escape their imprisonment and live clandestinely. Most of them settled in Andalusia, especially in the province of Cadiz and Sevilla. They were impoverished after having lost their goods to the Great Roundup. They continued to work in their traditional profession, which, although still prohibited, were tolerated by justice because there were no gadget or non gypsy people willing to perform them. The attempted extermination was followed by subsequent measures that continue to repress and restrict the freedom of the Roma people. It would not be until the pragmatics of 1783 that we see the first instances where Roma people are allowed to engage in trade and to form unions and brotherhoods. These pragmatics did little to help society's notion of Roma as an infected race, a belief that had justified extensive oppression and violence. They were still not considered an ethnic group and their lives continue to be dominated by societal prejudice and stereotypes stemming back for centuries. It is totally logical that such an oppressed group of people as, as the Roma, as the Gitano people, would try to isolate themselves away from society and rely upon a close night family structure for protection. This family structure forged an affirmation of Roma identity, cultural expression in face of oppression a place for the further development of the Gitano music or Gitano flamenco characterized by a, an impassioned cry of desperation. Towards the end of the 18th century, 
some of the, of the Spanish society, was exposed to flamenco gitano for the first time. It was uh, normal for people to ask the question about the origins of what they were hearing. They could not imagine where this music came from. On a larger scale, it would not be until the middle of the 19th century with the cafés cantantes that many more members of the Spanish society would hear flamenco gitano. It generated very little interest, but there it was, and here it continues today. Here we all are today, to speak on its foundation and to educate about the importance of the Gitano contribution in Spain. And I would like to thank you for your attention and end this lecture remembering an old flamenco lyrics that says, at the market's gates, with the candles and the lantern, they said loudly, kill him, he's a gypsy.